By operating solely within the third mental sphere, and not accounting for ways the unconscious programs may skew perceptions, the positivist viewpoint, while highly clever, is a restricted view of the universe. Within this view, not only is there the macro view of astrophysics, the Big Bang and black hole theories, but also the theory of dark matter. Modern scientists conceive of the black hole when studying stars, that if stars shrank to a certain point or threshold of size, then their gravitational poles will suck all the light and matter into itself, resulting in a black hole. In other words, a black hole is a region of space-time from which nothing can escape, even light. Eventually, a point is reached when even light, which travels at 186,000 miles a second, is not traveling fast enough to escape. At this point, nothing can get out and nothing can travel faster than light. This is a black hole. From the cosmic science point of view, a black hole is an interdimensional tunnel. The light sucked in by the black hole is reconstituted into plasma and secreted out at points nearby the center of the galaxy. But to say there is the other side of the black hole is to say that we are in another dimension of another universe in another time. And time itself, having the velocity faster than light, radializes infinitely from the black hole as the information waves of cosmic simultaneity. There is conflicting evidence in the scientific circuit as to whether or not black holes have actually been seen, how many there are, and so on. In 2004, the scientific community was stunned when Stephen Hawking retracted his earlier statement on black holes as a complete vacuum, sucking everything into them with an unimaginable density and maybe going into another dimension. Added to that is the latest theory and analysis that the universe seems to weigh more than what is observed, resulting in the theory of dark matter. Some scientists claim that the universe is made up of 90% dark matter existing between different galaxies. This seems to be a variation of the notion of ether. At the beginning of the century, one scientific theory claimed that light traveled through ether and highly subtle primordial forms of density in space. But the theory of relativity seemed to disprove that there was such a thing as ether, though the dark matter seems to be, once again, a kind of theory of ether. The world of the positivist science exists primarily because of two instruments that were developed in the time of Galileo, the telescope and the microscope. The telescope aided the astrophysicist Hubble to make all of his discoveries about the universe and its galaxies, thus the Hubble telescope. Scientists are now looking for the Big Bang with these telescopes, reasoning that if you look out far enough, you will see the beginning of space. Recently, in the 20th century, added to the telescope was the radio telescope, which studies distant radio signals. Accompanying the telescope is the microscope that is also constantly being improved by making these lenses finer. The microscope eventually led to quantum physics, the microscale study of the universe. By continuously exploding the small segments of reality through the microscope, the molecular structures were deemed equally significant and monumental as planets going around the star. Ever finer views led to the detection of protuberances in the electrons of the orbits and the deduction that scarcely visibly or imperceivable subatomic particles or forces existed that could only be defined as the basic quanta or phenomenal reality. As we know, if you keep examining an atom, always trying to get a closer look, you will see more and more space until it seems you no longer see the electrons going around the nucleus. Quantum physics introduces subatomic particles that reduce to two basic types, the leptons and quarks. According to quantum physics, there are six types of leptons and six types of quarks, as well as the strong, weak, gravitational and electromagnetic fields. 
In modern science, leptons and quarks are considered the building blocks of matter. The six types of leptons are neutrino, electron, theon, muon, antiteon neutrino, and the antimuon neutrino. The six types of quarks are up, down, top, bottom, strange, and charmed. Modern science also recognizes other odd behaving particles, namely hadrons, bosons, gluons, and gravitons. The theory of quantum physics says, what we call the observable universe consists solely of the neutrino, the electron, the up quark, and the down quark in different combinations. The other eight quarks and leptons constitute the unobservable universe. When we then ask, where do those particles like quarks come from, and how are they formed? Modern science tells us these particles are the products of collision occurring at very high speed in massive laboratory cyclotrons. What does this tell us? That creation is learned by destruction? How can we really say particles such as quarks are naturally occurring? Are there quarks and leptons inside of humans? If yes, where? And if no, why not? Some quantum physicists believe that there is a mathematical possibility that might prove the existence of an infinite number of universes, each with its own beginning and its own ending. This is the thinking that coined the term multiverse, multi meaning many, as opposed to universe, uni meaning one. Some quantum physicists even suggest that the entity we call I or me exists simultaneously in worlds or dimensions completely beyond our ability to experience. Is this physics or metaphysics? The method of cosmic science is cosmocentric, that is, from the point of view of the higher dimensions. Because mind is holonomically in resonance with all aspects of the cosmological process, it obtains information through direct holonomic perception. For this reason, we can say that cosmic science is not a theory, but a description of the universe.